And here we go. This is Flash Somebody at the Dork Table Special tonight. We're gonna me and Rob have a little joint venture going on with the Dork Table. You wanna say hey Rob? Hey everybody. And uh we're gonna get the hellos and the bots and bodies done quickly so we can get on to our special guest tonight, Mr. Larry Wood. So for your uh, hey thanks Grim for all the help too he, he had to come on and show me some stuff on wire uh, we do plan to open up the second half of the podcast to questions from the listening audience and RLM if you're on the wire dot com come on in and we'll open you up and if you are not on the wire dot com I'll post a thing again so you can be and then uh, you can ask Larry your question live. So tonight we've got in the room we say hello lows it's traditional rock. Farman, Beetle, Cowboy, Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Esmo, Chelsea, Dini, Circle, hey honey, da, Damn Van, Meter, Duh, Me, Green Slave, Graham Z, Java, Doctor, Underscore, Two, Prince, Rob, Works, hey Rob, Rome's, Van, White, Weather, Dork, Phantom, Bruce Dickinson, Chaskara, Cyborg Noodle, Dima, E-Man, Ensiv, Frumpy Work, Guest 53687, Pwnsa, Smartass, The Holiest Roger, and z -Picks. And if you guys do want to talk to Larry in the second half of the podcast, let me know and I'll show you how to do it. And for that, I'm going to say, take it away, Rob Works and Larry Wood. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Flash. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, so today we've got Larry on. We're going to talk about the power grid system, how it works, how electricity is generated, transmitted to your house, and the whys and wherefores of how that works and, and uh, why it's not the best system. And things, some things you can do to... And make that better. Um, welcome to the show, Larry. Uh, how are you doing today? Thank you. I'm doing great. Glad to be back. Absolutely. So I'm basically going to uh, turn it over to you. You said you wanted to, to um, talk a little bit about yeah, I, your... I want to sort of... Go ahead. Yeah, sort of explain who I am and, and where my head is. Um I was called an electrical engineer, had many, many, many years of college, and it took me 32 years of work experience to unlearn what I learned in college. Uh, what they teach you in school is not all there is to know about a specific subject, no matter what letters you have behind your name. Uh, with that being said, uh, a little bit about my concept of everything. There's a holy trinity out there, and it is in everything from a photon all the way to the entire universe. And that holy trinity is vibration, which causes electricity, which causes magnetism. Vibration, electricity, and magnetism. That's the three things that everything in creation and in what's not created yet has it causes a toroidal field which is basically a donut uh, and that's how everything works each of those fields interacts with the field next to it and that creates a different pattern that's what matter is okay and with that, we can go into how the power grid works. All right. Uh, your your so, power. Go ahead. As you know, uh, power is generated. There's several different ways. You've got your your traditional uh, coal-fired power plants, gas power plants, nuclear power plants, um, and then you have what they call sustainable, um, which I hate that word, but uh, you've got hydro, wind, and solar. So those are the all of the major typical uh, power generation systems. 
Um, and then I'll let you explain how the power is taken from those generators and stepped up and stepped down and transmitted uh, through the power lines. Okay. Um, at the power company, they generate and then boost it up to high voltage so that they can send it down the power lines. That's thousands and thousands of volts. You don't really need to know how many. It'll scare you. But when they when they generate their power, the voltage and the amperage starts at the same time. That makes everything the most efficient. Okay? Right. So you go to the first house or the first building, whatever, and they've got a lot of electronic equipment in there. And electronic equipment puts what we call odd harmonics, which is actually an odd number of harmonics, onto the system, which makes the voltage and amperage not start at the same time. The amperage will either lead or lag the voltage, and in most cases it's lag. But that costs the second guy more money for his power then it costs the first guy if the second guy's got exactly the same equipment. And then the second guy's stuff is added to the third guy. All of that keeps compounding all the way down the line. So the first guy in the, in the circuit gets relatively cheap power, and the last guy in the circuit sometimes pays twice as much for his power because of all of the odd harmonics, the bad stuff going in opposition to power flow that all of his neighbors have created for him. So if you have a big industry and have that problem, contact your power company and they'll put an induction capacitance system in for you, an LRC, uh, which will solve that problem. Uh, so... Now that now that you know that you've got bad power, there's things that you can do in your own house to sort of help the women to help lower that bill. Um, first of all, have a licensed electrician do all of the physical work, okay? Unless you're well versed in this stuff. But in your main distribution panel, over here in the United States, we've got 220 volts available out of two legs of 110 volts or 115, depending on where your system is. But you've got two legs that will give you your 220 power if you need it. So if you've got 20 amps coming off of one leg and 30 amps coming off of the other leg in your load, then that gives you an imbalance of 10 amps that's constantly going through that neutral wire back to the power company, and they're retrieving that power. So not only are you paying for it, you're giving it away you're as giving well. It right back. Yeah. yeah. So that they can charge you again for so it. So they get to charge double. Yeah. For that same power. Yeah. And that's Grimmer, something that... Grimmer had a question real quick uh, okay. on, on the uh, lag between the voltage and the amperage. Yes. Uh, Grim asked, how much lag is there? How, I mean, we're talking about milliseconds or something, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're talking milliseconds, but that can put you 90 degrees out of phase. Okay. Or 45 degrees out of phase, which is really bad. Uh, yeah. The The magnetic field cannot cross itself at anything other than 90 or 180 degrees. Any other crossing will cause that field to collapse, and you don't want that to happen in most cases. Right. You do on the phone line, but you don't want it on your power line. Right. Okay. Okay. So you can, you can balance the legs on your, on your panel. So let me let me expound on that a little bit for, oh, okay, people, for sure. people to so so they can kind of understand what the, what you're saying here. If you okay. go and look at your electrical panel, 
okay, you've got breakers in there, okay? Some of them are double pole, some of them are singles. If you don't know what that is, the double pole is the real wide ones that have two switches that are connected together. And they're usually your higher amperage ones, usually uh, 30 or 50 amp. Those are balanced. Now, the way the electrical panel is set up, every other slot is right, left, right, left, or one leg, the other leg. Does that sound right to you, Larry? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, going good. Okay, so if you go down your electrical panel and you add up, now you can you can scratch out the the double poles because they're already set up as as balanced because they're pulling off both sides. So you add up all your single pole breakers and see how they add up. And what you want is you want an even number on both sides, or you want the numbers to be the same or close to the same on both sides, so that uh, that's where we're talking about the balance. If you have a, a all, if if they built your panel and put all the breakers down the left side, all the way down to the bottom, and it started again at the top of the right side, and it only goes halfway down, you've got a very unbalanced system. Also, um, if you do have them, and most most electricians won't do that, but uh, I've seen things. But anyway, <laughs> anyways. Uh, you also want to actually look at what you're using on each of those breakers and like things that never get used, you can kind of write those off and, and kind of work out a balance uh, based on what's actually being used, you know, in your house. Does that all make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. Continue with your... Uh, okay. So... The, the other things that you can do to, to sort of help save on your power bill is the power company charges you for the highest usage in a 15-minute period through the 30-day billing cycle. So you don't want to get up and turn every light in the house on and leave it on until you go to work. Uh Right. Try try to limit your usage to just exactly the specific area that you're in. Uh, I know a lot of people keep every light in their house on and leave the porch light burning all night long and things like that. Well, nice if you got the money to do it, but right. it, it's not a good thing. So pay attention to what you've got on and how long you have it on. Uh Another thing is um, the empty spot in my head. <laughs> okay, let's, yeah, you can you can put now you have to pull the meter to do this. You have to pull the meter, and that's something that the power company has to do, or they will get really really mad at you. Oh yeah, they do a funny dance and everything. <laughs> yeah, but have have them pull the meter, put in a capacitor bank in your basement or wherever your first before the first fitting on your incoming water line is where one of your system grounds goes to. One of those big thick bare copper wires goes to that water pipe as it comes into the house before the first fitting. So that there's there's no way that it can be disconnected. Take that off. Make sure that everything in the house is turned off. Turn the break, main breaker of the panel off. Pull the meter. If you don't, you might get killed. Take yeah. that ground wire off. Hook it to one side of your capacitor. Hook the other side of the capacitor's back. And that will give you a capacitor. Back to the water pipe. Yeah, back to the water pipe. That will give you a system that will capture all of that imbalance, and you can use it again. Right. Okay, because you're going to have an imbalance no matter what you do. It's just you can limit that. Yeah. And you, you can, can do that. Go ahead. You can uh, make it as small as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And And you can do that same thing 
to the ground wire outside, but you'll have to build a little house around your equipment. Right. Yeah, for people that don't have a basement, that's... Yeah. Uh, or a... But do away with all that garbage, get off of main power, and make your own. Magnetic generation is available. It's a matter of, of just building some coils and making it yourself. Everybody can spin a magnet. Everybody can float a magnetic bearing. Float a magnetic bearing and make it spin. There is your power. Put that inside of a toroidal coil, and you've got all the energy you'll ever need. That's that's what I'm excited about. That's coming up, kids. Can't wait. Yeah. Well, well that only took 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, okay, let's let's go to the solar and the wind and stuff. Okay. That is expensive equipment to start with. It takes 300 percent more energy to build a solar panel than it will create in its entire life. A solar panel is hundreds of photovoltaic cells that produce a tiny, tiny bit of milliamps uh, all hooked together in series. That's just like your Christmas lights. When one of them goes out, they all go out. Then you throw the panel away because nobody has got the patience to sit there and test them all. Right. That that when you throw it away is hazardous waste. Okay, same with the wind, just not quite as bad. The wind generators, the big, huge windmills, mm -hmm. critters won't feed under that. Deer won't feed under it. Cattle won't feed yeah. under it. Sheep won't feed under it. So that can't be good for humans. Right. Well, that's just like your your high tension power lines too. That yeah. It's already it's been shown. Uh, there was a school where kids were getting cancer and and all kinds of stuff, lymphoma, and because these power lines were going right over the school, kids mm -hmm. were out there playing right under them, and they finally figured out, oh, hey, maybe it's these power lines uh, creating, you know, EMF. Yeah, and, your zoning uh, commissioner won't let them build a house under a power line. I think he does, Grimner. Grim, Grimner asked, uh, do you have a working model? Uh, we have a working prototype, and there are prototypes of the same thing all around the world right now that are being tested by some of the finest minds in the business. Uh, we're writing a safety manual and a uh, production manual. Uh, right now, and when we get all the safety features worked out, then we'll put it on the market. We'll put it on the market in kit form or fully made, however you want to get it. Uh, there'll be a five kilowatt unit that is big enough to power most houses, weighs less than 100 pounds, and you can have it on wheels if you want. Uh, and have any of the bells and whistles on it that you want, lights and gauges, whatever. Right. Uh, but that five kilowatt unit will probably cost about five thousand dollars. That's a dollar a watt. Right now, your your gas and diesel generators they cost quite a bit more than that, more than double that. Uh, so there's something to look forward to. It's just we haven't got all the safety things oh, worked out. That's yeah. Nice. Okay, so five kilowatt. That's five thousand watts. Five kilowatt generators. You see, I see those. I mean, how is that different from a little Honda generator, five thousand watt generator? Um, this uh, one will be run on magnetics with one circuit board. It'll run, it'll last about five years. It costs two dollars and fifty cents. Other than that, the rest of it will run about 300 years before it breaks down. Okay. Um, not to to <laughs> not to directly challenge you on that, but I'm seeing uh, Cummins uh, Onan generators five kilowatts for forty three hundred dollars. Um, okay, so that's that's cheaper. 
Okay. There's one. Okay. And then they go up. There's one for $8,000. There's one for, it's 5.5 kilowatt for 4,100, 4,200. Um, so, I mean, not to be a stick in the mud, but that, uh, doesn't quite how much. how long will that generator run well now that's the other thing is you're putting fuel in it and uh mm-hmm. and yeah they have a lifetime yeah so i mean um, i get it i just i'm just trying to be you know full disclosure on everything yeah the the yeah. magnetics it'll take a free a uh, frequency modulation board to give you 58 or 54 cycles out of it 54 times 8 is 432. That means that the power coming out of it will not be harmful. It'll put you back in harmony with nature. If 432 is middle A, 54 is low A. So that part is okay. That frequency modulation board will probably last maybe five years. And then you have to replace it. And right now they cost about $2.50. It's a plug and play board. Real easy to change. Uh, other than that, the magnets are the only thing to wear down and they will last about 300 to 400 years. Well, is that all? Yeah, not enough for me. They're supposed to be forever so you can call it perpetual motion. Right. <laughs> okay, I just found something. Have you ever heard of Infinity SAB? It is, they're calling it a 5 kilowatt magnetic generator. Wow, no, I haven't. Talk to me. Uh, it's made in Korea, um, from what I understand here. Let me just post the link here. Uh, and I'll put it in the wire so you can see it. You want that in the notes, Rob? For the I'm, show I'm, notes. I'm dropping it in the uh in the wire there. Okay. I'll put it in I'll put it on the on the RLM too. I'll and take it so, off the wire. It's fine. Uh it says uh da 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 um let's see. Uh total pre ordered. So Okay, they're taking pre-orders. The magnetic generator is a complex system with an organized structural arrangement of permanent magnets and bifiler coils and PCB controller with a specially designed software that are used to generate and dispense electrical energy. Initial starts performed by a battery or any other external source of energy to help motor reach needed RPM. After that, the external source can be. So this is not what you're doing. Not at all. This is a magnet. It, it, they're they're spinning magnets. Um, yeah, it, it's yeah. similar, but it's not the it's, same. It's not the same. It sure no. looks all. It sure looks all. Uh, all high tech and futuristic uh, looking. Yeah, it's pretty, and it's in a Faraday cage, so it won't hurt you. It yeah. reminds uh, me of the moon landing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I, I just did a search for five kilowatt generators, and that popped up in my search. So that was interesting. Looks nice, and it's got a lot of gauges and lights on it. That's what folks like to see. Yeah. Um, okay, guys, and I threw that in the notes in case people want to see what is available on the market now compared yeah, to what. They're selling what, that. But compared to what you're selling, working on. Right, and they're selling that yeah. for eight thousand. And it's and it's using two bifiler coils to do it, right? Which is which is real good, but explain a that to me, Larry. What's a bifiler coil? First of all, that's two wires that are wrapped in a circular pancake motion. Some people call them pancake coils. Okay. Uh, it it looks like a spiral laid out with two different wires. Now those are real good, <coughs> excuse me, and they they create a real high magnetic field, which is a wonderful thing. But this particular system has to be powered with a battery. It has and to you be don't started. Need that. It has to be started with a battery. Yeah, yeah you've got to have power, power to make it work. Right. Yeah. 
But according to that, so, once, once it started up, then it's good. It, yeah. It disconnected yeah. from it, it, Yeah, it can, it can continue operating once the magnets synergize. Right. Uh, the, the coils. And it's a mutual induction between those two coils that's giving them the five kilowatts. Okay. So that's it's a good system, uh, and I'm sure that it would be effective. But Grimner says, um, Grimner right. asks, he says, that's an awful large device for 5KW. Just wanted to bring it up to you now, Larry. Uh, our 18-inch coil that's 8 inches tall will produce the 5 kilowatts uh, at 3 volts. Uh, that's using input power. That same coil, let, let me tell you a little bit about our generator. I'll just describe the whole system to you. It's a four-coil system. One coil doesn't do anything but sit there with a haulback array set of magnets in the vortex. That haulback array sets off a magnetic resonance with the copper in that coil to produce 12 volts. Not 12 volts DC, but 12 volts AC static. That means without the magnets moving that you can see them. They're vibrating. They're sitting there doing what magnets do. And that creates a 12-volt AC system. That 12 volts goes into a spiral toroidal coil. Excuse me. A spiral toroidal coil that induces a charge into two other toroidal coils that are not the spiral pattern. They're a 9 by 18 phi relationship. Uh, that means that the parallelograms on the toroid are two spaces long and one space wide. Um, that, that gives you your five kilowatts by self-powering. Okay. And then you just hook your frequency modulation board up to that. And that so the you frequency can, modulation board is what gives you your 54 hertz or your 432. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And and that gives you 24 circuits, individual circuits, to take power off of. Okay. So uh, you've just about got everything that you need right there. Okay. And uh, that. That hooks into your main power supply to your to the main breaker. You disconnect the stuff coming from the pole. You hook this right where that came off the main breaker. Turn your main breaker on and leave it. You're done. A, you can have one of these in the trunk of your car for the vacation. I got a question about this new generator that we were just discussing there a minute ago. I, I opened it up a yeah. little further, and on the right side it says, under a thermometer, heat generation, under that, insignificant with internal cooling. Well, doesn't the coil still get hot then? Is that what they're trying to say without saying it? The, the, yeah, the those, co coils, okay. those coils get hot. Those coils get real hot, and if they're in a bad power location, there's liable to be a spike come through there that'll burn those coils up. It'll burn a gap in them. Well, where does the the power come from to cool the coils that are getting hot if you're saving money? <laughs> I, I'm confused. Sorry, guys. Uh, it, it could come off of one of the circuits that they're using as induction circuits. Or it could come off the battery. Oh, in layman's so terms. You've still got a battery to replace. Right. So instead of recycling, which is what your goal is, these people are consuming in the end. They're still doing what they're claiming they don't do. Well, 
it's more efficient than what we've got now. Okay, well, hamsters would be more efficient than what we have now. You just <laughs> yeah. can't afford to feed the fucking things. Get an exercise bike, put a generator, make it into a generator, and put your kids on it when they get rowdy. You can charge up your house and batteries in an hour. Let your kid work off his steam. Yeah. Another thing uh, this unit says that uh, it says it has up to 8,000 hours until maintenance, and it has a life cycle of at least 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd laugh at that. <laughs> so, yeah. And then uh, it has annual maintenance, consumables, inspection, and replacement. So there's consumable things that have to be replaced in here. I'm not sure what those are. Let me say this about that. Once I sell you a generator, I don't want to see you again. <laughs> right? That, uh, my daddy said, I, I asked him when, I, when he bought the, the first new car that I was aware of, I said, Dad, why didn't you get electric windows on it? He says, that's just something else to go wrong. And that sort of stuck with me. There's there's only one thing to go wrong with this, and it costs $2.50 every five years. Right. Okay, yeah, I see on here where it says, well, because this thing has a motor in it, actually, that spins the magnets. And so it says, according to our calculations, every 8,000 operational hours, the device should undergo preventive maintenance, which will be performed by trained technicians of a distributor's company. Technicians will replace, grease, and inspect all moving and electronic parts of the generator. What's their hourly rate? That uh, doesn't go into that. That's up. That depends on the uh, the particular distributor. I yeah. assume they're going to. And again, this is still future purchase. There, and it says clearly here that pre-ordering will not guarantee receiving the product faster. So it's not on the market yet. They're just they're testing the waters. No, they're, they're taking it. pre-orders. Yeah. Yeah. So there's they're no money up. exchanging hands, but plenty they're of data. Also, mm -hmm. They're also selling distributorships too, or offering distributorships. They have 20 distributors, 27 finished projects, 15 team members, two offices, 18 developed devices, and 14 patents. And they're all in Europe and Africa and Asia and a couple in South America. None in the United States. Imagine that. Well... We're working with an international group that one of the gentlemen has got an earth battery that works on the Tesla principle. Like Tesla made an earth battery. That's what Warden Cliff was. The tower. Uh, the tower, yeah. It was just a big earth battery, just like the pyramids. Uh, and it will give unlimited power, unlimited power just by taking it to where you want your power, driving the ground rod, and connect it to your system. So what we're doing at this point is eliminating some of the electronics that he's got in it with our coils. Uh, the coils that we've developed are totally unique. They're they follow vortex math, but I think that we're just about one of the very few that put them together close to right. Um, but 100 feet of wire, of 22-gauge wire, rated for 0.9 amps on one of our toroidal coils, we can get 10 amps per volt out of that and that's that's point four six total ohms of wire for you people that are doing the math along with me <laughs> we we it, standard formula is one volt through one ohm of conductor yields one amp we put one volt through point four six ohms of conductor and get ten amps we can put 30 amps at 3 volts, we get 30 amps out of this coil at 3 volts, 
and it only right. heats up after 30 minutes to 120 degrees. After 45 minutes, it's still 120 degrees. This same amount of wire at 30 amps on a standard coil starts a fire in three and a half minutes. You set it on a board, put 30 amps to it, it will set that board on fire in three and a half minutes. Yeah. So, so I have a there's, go ahead. I have a question. Okay. So you, and you've, you've said this all along about the three volts in 30 amps out. And that's at three volts that you're getting. So you're getting, you're putting three volts in with how many amp milliamps? 0.46, you said? Or yeah, 0.46 ohms, ohms of resistance. Okay, so, so we should no, get I, the input. The, the input is three volts and how many amps? Zero amps. We've we've turned the we've got a power supply and we turn the amperage all the way off so that the power supply is not providing any amperage whatsoever to the coil. Okay, that I don't understand how that works because I thought you had to have amperage to get voltage. You get the resistance from the coil to create the amperage. Okay. You're providing all we're doing is moving the source. We're we're moving the um uh, we're moving the source. The if we were to put the amperage into the coil, we could put as many amps as we wanted into it up to the, the melting point of the wire. But right. the power supply we've got, you can turn that down and control it where the power supply itself is only supplying voltage to the coil. The coil, the resistance in the coil itself provides the amperage. So voltage okay. divided just, by resistance equals amperage. It just runs counter to everything I thought I knew about electricity. Absolutely, absolutely, and it baffled me for years. Uh, our initial experiments... How do you, how do you put voltage into something without amperage? I just, that just baffles me. I, I don't understand how, that, how you can do that. Okay. When you have a voltage supply... There has to be some kind of amperage to push it. The amp, yeah, that's right. That's what the resistance does. Voltage divided by resistance gives you amperage, supposedly, and that, that formula doesn't work on our coils, but that's <laughs> the formula. And so the voltage comes out of the machine, goes into the coil. That coil provides the resistance okay. that provides the amperage. So I, I, I try to visualize these things, and so I'm... So, I'm seeing voltage. Voltage is the buildup of electrons, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, voltage, so you voltage got a pool of electrons up. in your in your in your power source here. Yeah. But nothing is pushing them. So right. it seems to me that the coil, since nothing's Stop. pushing them, the coil is sucking them up. That's right. And Our coil is up. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, there's a logo to have, huh? <laughs> our, our coils are receivers. Okay, so our coils are receivers. I'm just trying, get, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. So, you got so is volts. everybody else got, now, Rob. You got three volts worth of electrons sitting uh, pulled up in this power supply. Your coil pulls them into itself and runs them through this process with the with the uh, with the uh, magnetization and everything comes out comes out the other end you got 30 amps at three volts is that right that's right okay and then that's that first coil. no that's not the first call you said was 12 volts yeah, so now that that's with that's with a static hallback array in it uh, right. Do you know what a hallback array is? Yeah, I looked that up since the last time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a back, it's a back of magnets it's a, that's more one pole than the other, basically. Yeah, it's a configuration of magnets that, that create yeah. a, a an unbalanced poles. Anyways, yeah. um, so at three volts, thirty amps. Then what do you do to convert that to two twenty 
at, a, at 125 amps, something you can use in your house. That's what the 54 cycles is. The 54. That's right. what the frequency modulation board is. Okay. That, that 30 amps at 3 volts is out of our 8-inch coil, out of our baby 6-circuit coil. That's not okay. even a big coil. Okay. So what does the big coil put out? The big coil you can get 5KW out of. So five, okay, so now we're talking watts. Yeah, this all gets confusing because you're talking volts and amps and watts and and, and okay. I, I gotta watts. I gotta be able to tie it all together because watts it's, it's, watts divided by amps is volts. Watts divided by volts is amps. Okay. Volt volts divided by resistance is amps. Volts divided by amps is resistance. Okay. Watts is P over IE and volts is E over IR. I being amps. Right. Yeah, I um, I know the formulas. It's just But uh, they don't work that way anymore. <laughs> it doesn't add up. They don't work anymore. Uh, You've you got know, to take it. You would think Rob would, would give this less resistance with his personal opinions about society being what they are. And and it's the first time I've ever seen Rob act like a status, and I'm really enjoying it. Thank you, Rob. What do you? I don't know. Because it mean, goes but... it goes against what Larry said. It goes against everything he was taught. This particular thing does oh, not well, I see does not. Saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, trying to wrap my head around right. it. Right. So and... it, explaining something new in the old way doesn't ever work. That's where we are with politics. It's the same. And we've got yeah, this indoctrination I, about electric as well. Yeah, I, I was laughing at you there, sport. I'm back. I'm back on cool. mute. Back on no, mute. No, I'm just trying to understand. Um, Me too. No, I, I, I'm, that's the whole purpose of this. Doing exactly. This show. And it's just fun to see you spin. I'm sorry, Rob. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> so, okay. So, three volts, 30 amps. Okay. So we switch systems basically with the eight inch coil. That's the one that does three volts, thirty amps. And yeah. then and, and then we talked about the big one, the one you're actually gonna market. Uh yeah, that that's, does five kilowatts. Yeah, now, that, what what voltage amazing. and amperage does the, goes into those? You'll get sixty amps out maximum. Okay. At uh, at two hundred and twenty volts. Two twenty sixty amps. That's yeah. uh, that's what I was trying to get. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's in the system using the 12 volt coil with the haulback array. Yeah. As a driver. Yeah. Yeah. That drives it with 12 volts AC. You don't get AC out of a DC generator. That's what these are, DC generators. You don't get AC out of them. We right. do. That's another thing that doesn't compute. Right. We're yeah. getting an AC signal out. And so this 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 uh, driver coil, the twelve volt coil. What? How big is it? It's a twelve circuit, eighteen inch coil. Eighteen. Yeah, it's about circuits. eighteen inches. So each circuit produces one volt. So there's your twelve volts. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I, and you don't understand, or you don't know what makes it come out AC, or did, can you explain? Well, that? It, yeah, it comes out AC because of the resonant frequency. That, okay. When the hallback array is in the vortex, in the hole of the donut, right? That, that's sitting there and it's vibrating. You can't see it, but it's vibrating. Right. That vibration is in harmony. It's not the same frequency as the copper but it's in a harmonious frequency. They're singing in tune. One of them isn't sour. They're resonating. They're resonating, exactly. And that resonance is what gives you the AC. Ah, uh, so it's it's a it's a it's back actually, and forth it's a back yeah. and forth wave. It, yeah. Which and is that, that is. that's because of the way the coils are wound. You have ones that just just like Vortex math, just like the symbol of the the Abba God, with one through nine around the outside of it. Uh -huh. the, the firing pattern is uh, the 
symbol is one, two, four, eight, seven, five. It's a doubling and halving sign. Okay. Um, that fires if you connect one, four, seven, and back to one. That's one equilateral triangle. If you connect two, eight, five, and back to two, that's another equilateral triangle. That's the Merkaba, the Star of David. Okay. That's the symbol. Okay. Right, right. Okay. And the reason that these work and give you AC is because with 174, that's wrapping it clockwise. 285 is wrapping it counterclockwise. Okay. Okay, and that allows the magnetic field to travel the same direction, both positive and negative, never collapsing. Okay. I'm beginning to understand how it creates the... Yeah, that's the science behind the coil. That, that On a 12-circuit coil, that will create three perfect tornadoes that circulate in the ring of the toroidal shape, in the ring of the donut, right. which increases the magnetic field in the vortex, which magnetically decreases the resistance of the wire. It allows you to put more amperage through that wire. Right. That's how we're doing it. Okay. It kind of makes sense. I mean, I'm starting to grasp it a little better, but it's still a little fuzzy. Um, it's been years. I bet. Um, well, you know they say seeing is believing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And most, what are you going to see? Well, I, well, <laughs> there's, I, not I, much, there's not much to see. You're going to see a coil sitting there. I wasn't quite yeah. done yet, but there, <laughs> Sorry, there's people that believe an invisible guy lives in the clouds. So you got an easy audience. <laughs> oh, you guys are tough. Okay. Back to mute. Yeah. Bye-bye. Let's say it's been in the zoo. It's just all fascinating to me. I've always been interested in, in, in well, first of all, magnets. I was always fascinated with magnets just to, to begin with. And I've always thought and believed that there is a way to generate power using some type of magnetic system. And so this is just fitting right in my scheme of things, I guess you could say. So um, uh, back down to brass tacks again. I noticed you said you're going to be selling kits in full uh, uh, systems. Yeah. You didn't. You didn't mention going open source. Are you still yeah. going to be doing that? Yeah. That that'll be open source. That's okay. that's how we'll be selling the kits. We'll sell instruction manuals. Uh, whatever level you want to get into it, that's fine. I want to warn you right now: if you're going to wind your own coils. It's a long, tedious process and has to be done with love. If you cross any of the wires, you done screwed it up. Yeah. One one little flaw is will, will render, yeah. render it useless. But is, is it safe to say if this is done correctly, it cannot fuck itself up? Absolutely. Okay. Well, Absolutely. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, mechanics things can be knocked out of sync or what have you. I wasn't sure. I was guessing. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we've we've got a 3D uh, mold, or not mold, a 3D program now that puts a ridge down where the pattern needs to go. And all you got to do is lay your first wire next to that ridge and carry on. Yeah. But the wire is such a loose pattern that the wire has to be attached to the toroid every inch of the way. So it, it gets real tedious. 
we did it with two people. Were you using hot glue or? Yeah. But there are better ways to do it. Yeah. Uh, Hot glue is not organic, so it forms its own type of GANs onto the wire after the wire is energized. Uh So, So an organic material would be better. We're looking into that. Uh, okay. We're trying it with beeswax now, and okay. that works pretty good because 120 degrees doesn't melt beeswax. Huh. I didn't know that. Um, are the wires insulated? Yes, they have 200 degree, or, wait a minute, yeah, 200 degree centigrade rating insulation on them. Okay. And we go up to 120, and that's not even enough to damage the insulation. Oh, 120 C Celsius? Uh, 120 Fahrenheit. 120 Fahrenheit. Okay. Boy, this gives mind your own beeswax a whole new meaning. <laughs> Jeez. I feel so hey, smart. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm hungry for knowledge, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask all the questions. Uh, uh it, it's all this stuff has always fascinated me, like I said, and, and uh, gets me excited. Uh oh! Watch out, everybody! Well, <laughs> Rob's this, excited. This, this <laughs> is is something that can change the fucking moral. I couldn't resist, Rob. Sorry. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, you got all these people. Oh, you don't vote. <laughs> You're not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know what? <laughs> Fuck you. This is doing something. This is real. <laughs> oh, just ask them what they've invented. Reality is just too fun. I know, man. So there, there's uh, lots of people out there that are doing things like this, and some of them are having good success. We're just one of thousands. Exactly. Yeah, see, that's what yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. Uh, somebody was trying to tell me. There's only they seven billion of us on Earth, people. We need thousands you know, they've, of they've, you. They've kept the lid on this thing for at least a hundred years. Yeah. Or yeah. Well, thousands of years, actually. Maybe but, yeah. but we actually had, like, Tesla had a working unit or a working idea anyway. I'm sure he had it. Uh, he wouldn't have been building that big tower if he hadn't proven it already. Um. So Tesla had a working theory model, whatever you want to call it. And so that was almost 100 years ago, if not actually 100 years ago. So this stuff's been suppressed for 100 years. Well, it's I look at it like the 100th monkey effect. You've heard of that, Larry? You bet. Uh, it's going to come out. It's going to come out. They can't keep a lid on it anymore. They're, they're, they can, they're only going to be able to keep a lid on it for so long, and they know this. So, I mean, it's coming out. It's going to come out. And this is what's going to take their power away because that's how they control us is through dependence on oil, energy, money, all of it. If we can get this kind of thing widespread and in use and get people independent of these cocksuckers, that's what's going to take the system down. Not voting for some jackass that – anyway – that's the spirit, Brute. <laughs> vote for none of the above. <laughs> no shit. I yeah, vote for we, fire, I vote for fire bombs. We get called terrible names when we refuse to comply. <laughs> it's very, yeah, it's very lonely being a dork. Oh yeah, just sit on your butt and smoke pot. Oh yeah, yeah okay. That's the whole thing. That's what I'm doing yeah. over here. Yeah. Well. There's not much you can do with a mind that's that narrow, so you just let them talk. <laughs> Nobody listening any fucking way. Might as well let them yap. But uh, Donna Van Meter's on the real liberty, blowing a little oh, yeah. smoke up Larry's dress there. Yeah. Read Hi, that. Donna. I don't know if she's listening, but... Uh... Yeah, she's... she's oh, okay. Just, uh, who needs in schools when Larry can take to the air? Guarantees those kids would be better off. And that's a whole other thing is the whole education system, but I don't want to go into that. Oh, and we, Larry, we came on Larry. at a bad time to be live because a lot of folks are busy doing other things, and we didn't plan and let them know we were going to do Yeah, it's a regular show, so people aren't planning. Yeah. So, planning. But this will get me, picked uh, up. Let me, Larry, later. I want you to talk a little bit more about uh, the 432, 54 hertz, 
uh, you bet. resonant frequency, how and why that is beneficial to the human body as opposed to the 50 to 60 hertz, 50 or 60 hertz that they push the power out in and why that's disharmonious and actually causes disease as opposed to 432, which is harmonious and creates ease. That's right. Uh, our body is a machine. Believe it or not, we are an electrical generator. Our yep. body is run off of electrical impulses. Our thoughts are created by electrical impulses. We are electric. All of the garbage that they're spraying into the air, the aluminum and all the little metals and stuff, that all makes us more conductive. That means that the frequencies that they put out in their cell towers, whether it's 3G, 4G, 5G, or 6G, which is coming soon, <clears throat> is all harmful. That we receive that in our bodies better now because of all this metal that we've been breathing in. Also, the aluminum causes Alzheimer's. Yeah. Uh, so that's a bad thing. Wi-Fi in schools. Moms, dads, get your kids out of the schools with Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is harmful. 50% of the little girls between kindergarten and 12th grade, by 12th grade, 50% of them will be sterile. A little bit fewer than that of the boys. They're trying to get rid of that. that in three generations, how many people are going to be born? That can be easily fixed by going hard wire. Yeah. It's, it's just a cable, an, a, a, an, isol, an insulated cable that's shielded so that right. that field cannot get out. So there's things that you can do. Make the school districts go hard wire. Don't let them put cell towers the 5G junk up on top of your daycare centers, your hospitals, your churches, or anywhere else. Or your schools, or anywhere else. <laughs> uh, for luck. those of you who are vandals, zinc paint is exactly the same color as their equipment. You can paint that burger with zinc paint, and it will not broadcast. Oh. Uh, I didn't say that. Say what? Huh? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Ain't nobody paid attention around here, let me tell you. <laughs> now, you're talking about up on the face of the yeah. things. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the half. Yeah, it's the. And that, the that's zinc plate. with a Z, right? Yeah. Z I N C. Okay. It's rust proofing. Rust proofing paint. Okay. Yes. So any kind of rust-proofing paint that contains zinc would be sufficient? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but zinc oxide comes out the same color silver as their equipment. Right. Hmm. It's that little curved rectangular dish. Yeah. It should be about a foot and a half, two foot tall. Yeah. And there's like three of them on a tower usually or whatever. Yeah. One yeah. face in each direction. Yeah, that's that's the 4G. The 5G will be at, at the altitude of the street lights. Instead of instead of the little button on top of it for the photo cell, it'll be about twice the size of the photo cell. Uh -huh. And on those, you just spray the whole top. Donna says, "I love you, Larry." Ah, hi, Donna. Yeah, schools are all closing for two weeks. So, anyway. Uh, uh, my two cents on that, don't panic, folks. There's a whole lot more people dying of the normal flu because they had the flu shots than the <laughs> dying by this yeah. stuff. Yeah. If you're sick and old, you're going to die anyway. Get ready for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they forgot all words, about that, too. That flu deal. shot. When you, when you die, it's the best place that you will ever, ever, ever be. Nothing will be wrong. Nothing will bother you. You will feel perfect. 
trust me on that. Have you had a near-death experience, Larry? Three times. Care yeah. to care, I, care to elaborate? Uh, I'll tell you about the last one. Uh, that was in 1992 in Korea. I went over there to do a power quality job on the system that provided power for their military, um, police, and commercial radio signals. Mm -hmm. uh, they had been switching transformers, and when they switch it would to, when they put a load onto the transformer, it would blow out. Uh, they had many, many transformers in this place. It's a huge building. <coughs> So I went into one that had been blowing out to do a, a voltage test on it. And after I took the reading off the first pair of legs, I turned around and, and told the guy writing it down what the reading was. And as I turned back around, they switched. And that thing blew up. It, it made me crispy black. From my shoulders up, it melted a tie and, and coat that I had on. Damn. Um, I took all my hair. Uh, they rushed me to a, a hospital about 45 minutes outside of Seoul, Korea, because they didn't want to take me to a local because of the police. Uh, the, at that place, they took a scrub brush and scrub the black flaky stuff off my body and mm. rub some ointment on me and we went directly to the airport with me looking like a mummy. Wow. My whole my whole head was taped. I was giving me all chills. Fancy oh, stuff. Man. <laughs> you know, I scared kids all over the world. No doubt. Hmm. Uh, but I was an international terrorist because of that. They were down for twelve seconds before huh. their secondary kicked in. So, damn. You know, if I'd have stayed, I'd have got in trouble and ended up in a Korean prison. Damn. Well, so there you, you go. Were, while you were out, you experienced something? Yeah. Yeah, that that killed me, and I I woke up with some guy beating on my chest. Uh -huh. But uh, when I... When I was gone, I could I could see my body laying on the floor, uh -huh. no big deal. Hmm. But I I went out of a way I could see everything all at once, and I could see microscopic things at the same time. I was aware of everything of constellations of of clouds of, of gases forming, uh, suns and, and their plasma events. Uh, it it oh. was just amazing. No pain, no discomfort, warm, no worries whatsoever. Uh, the most tranquil feeling of peace that I've ever had in my life, and I'm ready to go back. Hmm. Wow. You know what everybody else calls that, Larry? LS, LSD. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah. well, you got to re remember, I, I, I mean, I know this, I, I know I promised I'd be kind of quiet, but just a little. But uh, You've been good, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You, but, you've earned, you've well, earned your peace. <laughs> we'll, well let you talk. You know how I go on hey. about how we've all been indoctrinated about shit. Right. So, people have been told stories about drugs that they never tried themselves and they judge the reality of that particular drug on the story they were told without ever trying it so they don't know yeah. they just think they know because somebody told them and that is exactly how i see all of the stuff that you guys have been talking about all night yeah this is you explaining something to me and i have to trust you enough to believe it yeah. Because simply, to, but simply because personally, I don't have that detailed of experience where I can go start messing with my panel and, and switching this and that around. I'm not qualified to do that. Yeah, but well, that's why I'm very qualified that and said right, right. Gonna, but I have, but I have, 
but I have the ability to understand things that I haven't physically done if somebody explains them to to me correctly. So you've yeah. done, yeah, you did a I'm not going to go jump on changing anything, but you've given me the uh, information I needed there where I can go down and make an assessment based on looking at the fucking panel whether I should have my electrician buddy take a look. Check it out. can't help yeah. me out. But I can well, look at I it. I wanted to go through and yeah. break that down on right. the panel as far as all the breakers and, and balancing them out. And oh, that was Rob, yeah. But see, now I, I can do that alone without somebody's help. So I learned something through the show. Cool. Mission accomplished. For all y'all that's yeah, going to get into your panel, let me explain one little thing to you. That neutral wire carries the imbalance. That's amperage. The hot wire carries the voltage. The neutral wire carries the amperage. That's the load on that circuit. Right. That white wire will hurt you a lot more than that black wire or that red wire. Be careful. That yeah. that that uninsulated ground copper wire, that one will also bite you. Be careful. Yeah. Uh, general rule of thumb, don't touch any wires. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, really, come on. It's electricity. Be, don't be stupid. Don't take uh, a wire off with the switch. Use, over. use gloves. Use use insulated tools. You know. Well, yeah, but I throw that in there because my experience reading the Internet, as a rule, is after 20 minutes of a video link or an explanation, the listener is suddenly an expert in that particular field. Oh, yeah. And I yeah. just like to remind people that, you know, there's nothing wrong with being incapable of doing something like this for yourself. I mean, come on. It's nice to have the knowledge, but. Oh, yeah. Most people aren't. The physical. Them. Yeah. The physical stuff. Well, that's what you guys are for. So I appreciate it. I mean, it. I, I'm, no, I'm no expert by far. <laughs> way more of an expert than I am. I, I've, I've, <laughs> nah, I, and I've been, a, I've been a, a, an apprentice electrician. Um, so I know a little bit about, you know, how the traditional electricity, electrical systems are put together, commercial systems and home. Well, so I've done we, a little bit in that department. But. but we put Larry in a kind of a weird spot trying to explain something that goes against everything he was taught in, in his education of this. And then he tries to explain it to you. And it was just amazing to see you well, go through I what have that. Yeah, I have a yeah. little bit of background in that, and and yeah, and it, 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 it's just like saying you know, your car runs but it doesn't have any gas in it. Right, right, right. Uh, that's what I. What? Hear, you, know? you, have, you got voltage <laughs> but no amperage. Well, how is the voltage going down the wire if there's no amperage? The way I deciphered it is it's in the word play that you use to describe it. If you understand the math equation then the answer is obvious. And if you don't understand the math equation, then you're going to be a little lost. That is it, what, the result I got from listening. Because when he said it in an uh, algebraic form question or statement, you seem to follow along better. He was giving certain words a certain well, identity he was, he was in math. Basic, uh, electrical formulas. Right. Uh, I wouldn't know an electrical Voltage. formula from a baby formula, Rob. Voltage, <laughs> voltage, resistance, and amperage. Um, <laughs> yeah, and blah, blah, blah. Amazing. And they're all uh, inversion. They're all just inversions of each other. Um, it's, it's, it's. You know, if you got two, you can figure out the other one. Well, right. That's what they taught yeah. you in school. Yeah. Exactly. And that, that's yes. only three fifths of the equation. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Not to add. Frequency and magnetism into that equation. It's five dimensional, not three dimensional. And Thank that you. changes the outcome of your results when you build yeah. your coil. It it explains where the amperage comes from. Okay. Right. Yeah. It, in instead of, technical instead terms. of so basically the Hallback array is, yeah. is is creating a, a voltage mm. over here, and the coil is sucking it up. It's 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 it's. Uh, it's like negative pressure. Well, it strikes the, me, Rob. The coil operates like a radio antenna, a quarter-wave radio antenna. When okay. there's voltage around, it sucks it. Hmm. Yeah, it, 
it, it receives it. it. But it strikes me that people are all, you know, micro, they're using the wireless phones and cell phones, all this gadgetry, that they would mm-hmm. be more open to something being improved upon than they truly are. Because I, I want a convenience. We don't care if it kills us. Well, I do. <laughs> I, I'm not in a hurry to go or anything. If you want to know the truth, but I mean, I like to dare. I like to dare reality now and again. I'm still human. I mean, I'm not. Haven't given up. Like just crawl into a hole and die. But I mean, with all the crap going on up. right now, it seems like the, I've been real close to that. <laughs> Yeah, well, giving up in the long run, quitting is a whole lot easier than doing whatever we're doing. Because at least we're trying to tell people there is an alternate answer to the problem that you don't even know you have. Yeah. Everything everything is electric. Mm-hmm. The earth is negative, the sky is positive, and everything in between that is a capacitor of some sort. Right. So all the energy is there. It's always yeah. been there. All we've got to do is suck it up. And that's what a radio antenna does. Is it sucks up frequency. All right. Okay, here's a uh, something uh, a little off the same subject matter, but off this particular subject. You've, you, you've heard of the lightning storms in Venezuela? There? Yeah. What do you make of that? that? Oh, I want to I, – we're working on it. <laughs> You're working on it. I love it. <laughs> it. The the problem with that right now with collecting that is there are not any capacitors with the ability to do it yet. Capacity to, to absorb that much power. Yeah. Yeah. We're working. Well, I'm, on I'm more interested in what's causing it. I'm thinking there's got to be some kind of mineral makeup in the ground there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Really that's, I'm more interested in finding out what is that mineral makeup that's making it, and can it be duplicated? And, and, and what country? And it's mostly magnetite, basalt, and and uh, 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 diamite, diorite. What country was that again, Ron? Diorite. What? Venezuela. Diorite. It's in Venezuela. Yeah. The country they just happen to be uh, regime changing. They're also sitting on one of the largest deposits of oil, too, but that's an old yeah. story. That's one of their so regime so teams. We're trying to get somebody in there we can rob. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow, the truth is really just terrible. It is. Can't we just tell some more lies and enjoy life? <laughs> America is the biggest thief in the, in the whole world. And, and it's all done to people that aren't in the World Bank. Yep. Follow the money. Well, we've done all that. See, we're, there's a crowd of us, right? And we've been convinced up to our eyeballs. There's really not much more to really learn about, you know, the moral depravity and human degradation that we're calling society. But, what people aren't encouraged about is that there's a way to fix this. They're they're so hooked on collapse and global domination, they forget that you can only see outside your house so far without binoculars. <laughs> Figure it out. Binoculars, that's still a very limited view. You ain't going anywhere. Yeah. It, you know, so where we are physically has been hijacked somehow by these electronic wonders that we engage in. And we lose track of uh, where we are at the moment. Earth, and that's a big thing to me, because for some reason I still have the ability to listen to people like Larry and try to make sense of it, what it what it means to me in the long run. Yeah. Some people don't get my attention, yeah. and not just disbelieve it out of hand because uh, you learned in school better. Yeah, because he'll go the extra mile like he did with you to explain. You know, you, this is it went against everything I believe, and this is why. And you went right to yeah. it, and you went, "Oh yeah, I see, yeah, I see that." And I, I'm just yeah. observing this, so I'm getting the two of you guys agreeing about something that is beyond my, you know, total comprehension. But I, I know you agree. Well, it's been bugging me since the very first time we had Larry on. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you get three volts? And 
turn it into 30 amps. Uh, it's apples and oranges. So Tesla's so, one wire system. Tesla's single but, wire. I mean, it wasn't clicking in my brain. I mean, and it's just because of the way it was being explained. You were saying three volts in, 30 amps out. That There's there's missing components. <laughs> he explained <laughs> yeah. that, yeah. The point, the, yeah. Four, four, the point four six ohms of resistance. Right. So it just turns out to be, in a sense. But you never actually said a three word. amps on the other, or three volts on the other end. So you're putting three volts in. <laughs> uh, no amperage. The coil is is um, sucking that in. It's it's drawing it in and adding the thirty amps to it, and so it's coming out and pushing three volts at the other end with thirty amps. Right, but three volts at thirty amps out of that six inch coil is only ninety watts. Okay. So, yeah. you yeah. know, that that little coil isn't doing very much, but that's a six-circuit coil. That was our very first prototype. Right. That's, that's what made us believe. Right. That's what proved the theory. Yeah. So so is this Maybe one of those things, you it up. if you build it bigger, you get a better result, or is it a matter of building it correctly to get the desired result? Is that it's bigger and more it, more co- more wraps more circuits the the yeah the the bigger and more circuits you put on it the more things it can do and the the more power you can put through it the more voltage you can put through it if we were to plug one of these things into 120 volts it would produce 1200 amps that will kick it yeah, quick with a quick. So, dose. so we we just got to have a little bit bigger wire on it. What these do, you can use ten wire sizes smaller and get the same amperage output with less heat. Wow! And no wow. iron core. An iron core simply saturates and and makes the magnetic field stop expanding. An iron core, an iron core would break it. Yeah, an iron an iron core makes these things a heater. Yeah, it just heats up and burns up. Yeah, not any good at all. Yeah, yeah. I also noticed I went looking out, looking at uh, online for coils of all kinds, and I've noticed they're they're all squared off. All you know, all the little coils for your electronics and stuff like that, they're squared. That's the, a romper the, room no no. That's the the toroids. They're all they're not squared. Uh-huh. They're in a circle, but the edges are flat. Yeah, they've got ninety degree bends in them. Exactly, they're not well, round. There are no ninety round degree colors. bends. Yeah, there are no ninety degree bends at all in our stuff. The, hold your hand out flat. Your fingers are next to one another. They're not curved over one another unless your hands are weird. <laughs> that's the, that's the way our wires are. Right. And single layer. That way, the magnetic field of each wire influences the magnetic field of the wire next to it and those surrounding it. That answered another question. Oh, so like circuit. jump in a light, like a jump in a light box or a plug-in box on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I understand that because I've done that. And, so I know. And and the two circuits that are next to one another are going opposite directions. And then on the outside of each of those pair of circuits is an empty space so that the magnetic field created by the interaction of the two circuits can expand to its maximum potential. So, uh-huh. Larry, is this is it safe to assume that, that this design that you're describing is designed with uh, usage in mind rather than waste? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, there are no eddy currents. There's we don't no have any hot spots. Okay. Well, that's the part that I think is the hardest for people to really Ed- get a grip on. Because every eddy current, eddy current is the foreign word that they use to mean heat. Mm-hmm. When when there's an imperfection in the way it's wound or an imperfection in the method, then you get a hot spot. That hot spot translates into it draws more amperage to do the same work, which means 
you pay more money. Right. So, for example, out. when I'm vacuuming <clears throat> my carpet thing here, where I sit, right, that the vacuum motor makes that excessive heat mm -hmm. because awesome. because of the very thing that that we're discussing here is the the miswrap the of the coil. They are, are wound helter skelter. They're just they're just yeah. Okay. Stuck on a spindle and and spun and hold the wire up there. And the delivery of the electricity. Kind of back and forth. Okay, and the delivery of the electricity is on the wrong cycle, wrong it's frequency. On the wrong cycle, and it's also it's also trashed up. Yep. I See, like it. Okay, you've heard the you've heard the expression electricity is like water, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like plumbing. Okay, uh, this goes back to the beginning of the show when we talked about the, tran uh, the power generation transmission system and how Larry was talking about the first house it comes to gets nice, clean power. And they're paying the least for their power because it's nice and clean and, and, and smooth as it comes into the house. And then whatever they do uh, puts that into the signal and then it goes on down to the next house. And they add whatever their... Tr uh, components that, that whatever frequency harmonics get added and all the way down the line so the last guy on the line uh, has the worst power possible and pays the most for it oh like, so that's like being one like of whatever you start you start with a spring up in the hills you got nice pristine fresh yeah. clean water yeah. and it goes by the first place and you know they're taking water out and using it and putting their putting their sewer back into it yeah like being a clinton's girl so they're so they're, so they're running it. off so I this happens it. time and time and time again down in the river by the time you get down to the river into the river you got uh, you know poison water hmm. basically now you know not why nobody wanted to date hillary <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good, that's a good analogy on huh, that larry I yeah, mean, yeah, it is perfect. That's the way I understood it. The way you explained that's it, exactly the way it, it is. Made sense. And and these generators are going to be producing that perfect power for you. Yeah. So You're no way in that outside garbage. And there's no ways yeah. to pass on to the next person. That's right. Well, you see, that's, only that's what you create within your own building, and there's ways to mitigate that. And I just foresee explaining this to somebody that's you know, say not interested all that much in what this is about to be a arm, like beating them to you death with their own you arm. You can't explain it to them. Say, here's a generator. It's going to last you for five years. <laughs> put in a $2.50 board and it'll last another five years. Oh, yeah. well, if you're going to speak Yiddish, I'm sure they'll understand that. That's all they'll understand. You got to fix it every yeah, five years. They get down to the bottom line, man. That's all they care about. Oh, the Jews yep. are not going to like you, Larry. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, I, personal power generation, I think, is the future. Every every home should have its own source of power mm. uh, because power is everywhere. It's it's not just your home. Well, it's, yeah, home, business, your cars, business, your planes, your helicopters. Yeah, everything. everything. We've, we've designed a system for a helicopter and a, a car that uses toroidal coils and magnets on rotating surfaces with a capacitor system. You have a capacitor system that's fully charged to begin with. You have to charge these cars first one time. You drive, that makes the wheels start turning. When the wheels start turning, it switches off of that capacitor system, recharges it, and charges up a secondary capacitor system. When you get where you're going, because as your wheels turn, it's going to provide all the electricity you're going to need for your car to run. So when you get to where you're going, you plug into the building where you're at to provide power to the building from your car. <laughs> wow. What a turnaround a that is. A helicopter that never has to come out of the out of the air. You never have to replace batteries. You'll have a capacitor go bad once every 10 years. It's not a $5,000 batch of batteries every five years. 
Yeah, but it's yeah. also not endless profit oh, for a corporation. If if every car in the United States was an electric car, how many more power plants would they have to build? Coal power plants, gas power plants, would they have to build in order to provide power for all those cars? That's a lot of power. I saw a graph the other day. Yesterday. How dumb is that? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm no, sorry, I'm just an old opinionated old man. Yeah, yeah me too. It helps when you have the right opinion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, it, it, it makes sense. It's 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 the only possible way to, to move into the future. This this whole thing with uh, paying for for fuel and putting putting shit that burns into a car is it's it's archaic. Yeah, the but Romans where it should be. Wow. The Romans used steam power 2,000 years ago, and still with our atomic power plants, we're still using steam. <laughs> when are we yeah. going to get out of that? Well, steam is still the strongest uh, Not anymore. Motor, motor that they've, they've built. As far as picking things up go, that the there's a steam engine at a, at a roundhouse train station. Where that that they pick up locomotives with, that's still the strongest. Uh, I believe that can be shoot. done with a magnetic field. Oh, I I believe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like the guy, like the guy at Coral Castle. That's what yep. he was doing. Lead Scalnin. Lead Scalnin. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. yeah. And that's how the pyramids are built, and that's how things were done. Right, Our, but we get five thousand years ago when those things were built. But we get told these, you know, these religious stories and all these uh, political stories and history stories that are complete garbage from the beginning to the end, right? By paid yeah. professionals in the field of, yeah. you know, oh, basically. It's, 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 it's not that we don't have garbage. a bunch of knowledge. It's just everything we know is wrong. Exactly right. They've missed. I harp on that constantly. They misrepresented so much. The wrong knowledge. And, and here we are proving it, making uh, cannabis legal in 2020. Like what? Are yeah, you people complete help. idiots, or did we? I mean, it, no. It's the religion and the schools, just like you were saying, Larry. Civilization. <laughs> but here we are, this little group of ragtag weirdos that's on to something huge. So we need yeah. some. We need somebody to make it, Larry. We got to make it, Larry. Oh, like Larry said, there's thousands of. of, of oh yeah, you, like that out there yeah. doing it, working on it. Have been for years and years and years. I've been studying. It. Absolutely, I've been posting it in the chat room. The Rex Research. Are you familiar with Rex Research, Larry? No, yes, I'm sir. Not. Yeah, and and Russ Chris. Russ is a genius. Yeah, he does a lot of fun things uh, and. Uh, uh, Robert Murray Smith, that man's a genius. You know, yeah. Larry, I would say that, uh, you know, a simpleton like myself would challenge you with something like this. So don't hold me responsible for what I'm going to tell you right now. But okay, average, I'm putting myself in the average Joe suit. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, hey, the government's doing what they're doing to keep people like you from ripping me off. You know, instead of what could be, which would be an improvement, they they pitch the present sources as this is your safety net against carn men that will try to sell you the impossible. That's my because we said it was impossible. Well, you got to admit the government has a big following, Rob. <laughs> There's a lot of people that will not openly. Deny the government because they don't want the peer pressure that goes along with oh, it. People deny God before they'll deny government. Okay, so I'm saying, you know, I'm just saying that that their excuse for acknowledging your your knowledge, Larry, is the government is there providing us with something now, but you want to replace it with your pie in the sky dreams? Or I don't think so. I'm going with the government, and that's the enemy to me. That's what I think. Well, that's fine. You're just going to get left behind. <laughs> oh, there you go. Speaking Yiddish always stay, helps. Stay in yeah. your cave. 
Wow. So intimidate the uh, to a following, basically. Because the truth hurts. There's only like 5% of the people that are alive that are necessary to make this work in the first place. You get 5% of this population of anywhere, and then you got your start. It's yeah. the gathering that's impossible because a lot of us aren't on the Internet. People yeah. that think the way you think and have experienced what you're talking about and see the, the usefulness of it, they, they live off the grid and off the electronic world, so we're not, we're not getting them, so they don't know we're behind them, too. They're alone out there, just like we are. But you can get AC power from a car alternator. You can make a windmill yeah. out of that. But uh, one of them won't do it. You have to do a bunch of them. But you can put up enough of those to power your entire house, everything you want to do. You can make an earth battery with a couple of coils with it that will provide all the power that you need. Can, Lots of ways to generate power. Can, yeah. yeah. Uh, everybody, there's there's tons of people out there. Some of them, their stuff works. Some of them, it's garbage. But <laughs> You've got to do the research. You can't just accept people at face value. Don't believe what I've been telling you. Don't believe me. Do your research. Look up pyramid math. Look up Solomon math. Look up vortex math. Learn the different ways to do things. See the patterns in nature. See the patterns in the, in the ancient rock carvings that they did for us. Those aren't language. Those aren't religious symbols. Those are power devices. <laughs> Disguised, yeah. Schematics. Wow. Look, look at the original set of Polish runes. Out of 20 characters, six of them are plasma generators. Two of them are proton accelerators. So you just... You can't look at things the way they've been doing it. Read numbers in the Bible. All you guys that are experimenting with high frequencies, read numbers in the Bible. Translate those into, into real numbers. A score is 20. Go mm -hmm. from there. The, the positions that Moses named all are numbered, all of his tribes, all of their livestock, and all of his armies. He made them camp in certain cardinal positions, different ones of them. Right, Those right. are transformer frequencies. Those are transformer frequencies. Hmm. Ah. So it, all this is hidden in plain sight. Here's some Polish runes. I'll put it in the wire so you can see it there. Just some stones that people uh, are selling. Or, yeah, with all the Polish runes. Uh, yeah, these yeah. is what he was just Red speaking of. Yeah. yeah, that's what he was just talking about. So wow. I'm going to change the subject, Larry. Uh, okay. How much thought have you put into uh, electric motors uh, based on your power system? Tons, tons. Our our objective is to not just make generators. We want to interface our coils with every piece of electronic and electrical equipment out there. With harmonious motors. Yeah. That actually. Self-powered self refrigerator, self-powered freezer. Yeah. Self-powered washing machine. Oh, man. Uh, you got to... Uh... Talk right. about changing the world, man. Well, wait a minute. You got some opposition on the RLM feed, Mr. Vortex. You might want to look at it. What? Read the chat. Fathark. Okay. Those are not Polish runes. Okay, well, take it up with the website. I didn't do it. I just <laughs> posted it. Uh, I went to images. Elder. I went to images on Google search and found the Polish runes. 
It's oh, okay. the, orig the original writing from Poland. Okay, here you go. All right. The, the, what you showed was, was Celtic runes, I believe. Okay, so the, I, uh, I was wrong. Ooh, very good. We have hit a new low on the dork table. Okay. Somebody was actually <laughs> wrong about something on this 12th day of March 2020. And it was Rob Works that was wrong, everybody. <laughs> uh, me I'm stalling so you can put an X on the bottom of the boat so I remember where I caught it. <laughs> it's smart. Oy, oy, oy. Anyway, so uh, we have the difference we the missed. difference between a, a master and a failure is the uh, master has failed more times than the failure has ever tried. Yeah, yeah but we misrep the Polish runes, so we want to correct that, right? I apologize. Yeah, but for misrepresenting the these is, is there these a knockoff fakes? Okay, is there a link Polish to runes. is there a link to the Polish Larry, runes or but, not? But, Put the link. Put a link to the picture you're looking at. Oh, there you uh, go. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly what. So well, those dirty. Now dogs. you're thinking, Mr. Rob works. Now you're thinking. Pick it up. Hey. Anyway, it's been really kind of uh, interesting and more than okay. usual with you two guys. Because I did spend Does a lot the, of time uh, paying attention. The Polish room have the swastika looking thing in it. Polish room. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's the one. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 wow. Technical oh, talk on the dork table. The swastika looking thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. The next thing you know, you'll be blaming Israel for all the world's problems. Hey there, Mr. Works. <laughs> no, it was very long before Israel. You know what a lot of people, you know what a lot of people, like to live. a lot of people don't know about their own government is that half the Senate holds dual citizenship with Israel. And they go, well, how can such a small country have so much influence? <laughs> well, uh -huh. could it be because half their citizens are in the Senate? <laughs> no. I, I was shifting gears for a minute. <laughs> While you guys look for your runes, I was giving you an up-to-date news report on the status of the Jew in the Senate. In the United States. Well, there's just in case you didn't know. <laughs> a lot of different ones. Oh, okay. Well, I was stalling yeah, until you I guys found figured the out. I was looking for yet. They haven't solved the rune situation at the dork table. <laughs> there, we have our cleverest of workers hard at the task, <laughs> searching the archives for the oh, runes yeah. of which we speak. Well, I'm well, sure yeah. Larry's seen it. It exists somewhere. I don't think Larry just made go. that up. I got one coming. Ah, see, they got it done. And I saw a little bit for you. Oh, uh, maybe we could get it done. Well, we're down to the last 23 minutes of this epic saga that we're doing tonight on Real Liberty Media. So, you guys better tear it up, or I will. Chat. We're tearing it up. We're tearing it up. What, what other electrical questions could you possibly have for um, Larry that well, you haven't I, I thought was of? About, I was asking Larry about the motors. And ah, okay. About, that's when the yeah, Polish that's thing came up. Come up those with are, those are, and so I was I was wondering uh, if if Larry would be willing to uh, maybe expound a little bit on what kind of uh, ideas, designs he's had as far as uh, – uh, uh, a motor, just a plain electric AC motor. Okay. Um, and what's wrong with the ones we have, and, and what would you do to what have you well, come up with? The ones you got are sixty percent efficient at best. Right. That means you're paying forty percent more for the power that they use than you need to. Right. So I wanted to eliminate that to begin with. Okay. And that power has all gone away with the heat. So by eliminating the eddy currents, we've eliminated the extra heat that comes out of them. Right. The extra heat. Yeah, uh, they, over, they over and above the friction heat. Yeah. So uh, to make a magnetic generator, all you've got to do, uh, a V-gate is a V configuration of magnets that has magnets uh, on the legs that are 
alternating poles all the way up to the point, and the point is a single pole. That gives you basically a hallback array in your in your magnets. When you turn that into a circle with the magnets on the inside, that's what slips down into the hole, the vortex of the coil. Okay. That's the stationary part. Then there's a cylinder that has multi multi poles on it, four, eight, twelve, however many you can get on there. Twelve is best. That slides down. It's a cylinder that slides down into that hole inside of those other magnets. Because of that V shape, that cylinder magnet will rotate. It will rotate at a high speed if you've got your magnets uh, aligned properly and the proper distance between them. That will induce a charge into the coil through magnetic induction. When you move a magnet past any conductor, it will generate right. electricity. Right. That's just the way that is. So there you go. Put a frequency modulation board on it to give you your 54 cycles and you've got your power right there. Okay, I okay. I was actually talking about a motor, like a drive motor on a car. Oh, okay. Uh, change the drive motor out to an electric motor, and right. put put magnets around the axles. And on the on the car electric motors, there's a big spindle that comes out the back that's opposite of the drive motor, of the drive end of it. Okay. Put magnets on that cylinder because it spins real fast. Put a toroidal coil around those. Uh -huh. You've got the power for your car. Put a toroidal coil around the magnets on the axles. Still didn't, still didn't get what I was going with. Um, the actual motor. Do you have you thought about or come up with designs for the actual motor configuration, like like a standard electric motor right now that runs on AC power, like the motor in your refrigerator that turns the 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 pump? It's, you don't need that kind of motor anymore. It's an electric motor. Okay, uh, why not? Because all of your electric power for all of that equipment is going to come off the coil. Right, but you still have to spin that Freon pump. How do you, yeah, you spin the Freon pump? You, you've got to lower the pressure in the, in the tubing, yeah. you got to uh, spin a pump. I mean, in the car, you have to spin the wheels. What What kind of motor? I understand how you're talking about generating the power. But the motor itself, do you have any kind of design, motor design, AC motor design improvement? Basically, do you have any improvement on what Tesla did <laughs> um, as far as designing, building uh, AC motors? Uh, so, separate the power from it. The power's over here. You got a motor. You want to spin a fan to blow air in your face. Is okay. there a design for a motor? Like you said, they're only 60% efficient. You how, take, do you get, how do you get a 100% efficient motor out of it? You take that electric motor and turn it into a generator. Okay. It, it can do both things at the same time. Okay, it's so you're basically taking that, that the hallback array that's with the yeah. cylinder that spins, you attach a, 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 a drive shaft to that. Yeah. Basically. Two so counters. That was your answer. Is yeah, you two counter-rotating magnetic fields will make a magnetic bearing. That magnetic bearing turns twice as fast on one side as it does on the other. You can go to Magnomatics, M-A-G-N-O-M-A-T-I-C, and uh, dot com, and they are the most efficient ones that really work on the market right now. Magnetic they have both a generator and magnetic gears, right. high-torque magnetic gears. Magnematics. Yep. Okay. Magnetic gears. Okay. 
I'll just pop a link on that to that. Yeah, those, those folks are the are the best that's doing it right now. So you would say they have the best motors available on the market today? Yeah, but they're not the cheapest. Obviously, they're, they're, not, they're, not there. they're a little expensive. Yeah, but they're doing it, and and they're free. I mean, once you buy the equipment, it's free. It will run until the magnets wear down. Their bearing is a double takeoff bearing. One side turns twice as fast as the other, just in every other magnetic rotating bearing. Okay, I'll have to look into that. Uh, that core, the magnetic gear. From the magnetic gear, there are two derivative products. Uh, let me just bring on that. The magnet, a magnetic gear uses permanent magnets to transmit torque between an input and output shaft without mechanical contact. Mechanic, magnetic gears can achieve efficiencies greater than 99% at full load with much higher part load deficiencies than a mechanical gear. For higher power ratings, a magnetic gear will be a smaller, lighter, and lower cost. Uh, depending on the space available, a magnetic gear may be the only viable technology by uh, selling their shit. Since there's... Da, 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 da. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're not t really telling you how it works. They're just saying this is. They've got a really good video that that gives you some of the basics. Okay. Uh, hey, Larry, mm -hmm. is there any information that you could uh, add to the link to the notes of the podcast for people to pursue following your open source information? Or not? Yet. Are you not ready? Okay, I wasn't sure if I, if I asked the last time or not. I got high. <laughs> this this equipment, mm -hmm. although the way we're doing it, it's it's going to be safe. Right now, if you don't know what you're doing, just like in the the Fantastic Planet, do not look into the eye of the Gorgon. <laughs> if yeah. you put your head over the over the hole in these coils, some of them will kill you. Wow, this is some technical stuff, then. Mm. So, it, it, we're we're working out all the Faraday cages and the egg shape that it needs to be, and mm. we're we're going between egg and round right now. Right, but you uh, know, electricity is really a good teacher, and it takes the idiots out at real early ages. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. if you've survived yeah. 60 fucking years through this electricity there's like, there's shit. There's a high Darwin factor in the, in yeah. the field. Yes. But <laughs> if if you've lasted as long as I have without killing yourself, there's a chance that yeah. you learn something. Whether you realize it or not is another story. But we well, just... Go grab, the main, you know, go grab the main bus on a 440 uh, power. Okay, that's, that's, kill that's... That'll kill you too. But see, that's what I mean. <laughs> that, that, that common fear that's instilled into us by society... About electricity serves a purpose, <laughs> but not to you guys because you're electrical minded, so you go right to it and investigate it. Well, the only people that have anything to fear are dumbasses. Well, then I'm a dumbass because I've got a strong respect for I things. Then you should have a good, healthy sparkle. fear of electricity because I do. If you don't know what you're doing; it'll hurt you. Exactly. I mean, I can change a plug or something. That's, a light that's switch, common but, sense. Yeah. But the to go into the panel, remember. Yeah. Maintain the same potential. I couldn't figure oh, out. I, I was blowing smoke up your skirts by saying that the most of us, speaking for the you know the dorks, you we, know, we have an interest, but we're not going to physically do it. You can ask a bullshit question, but we're going to give you a real answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, as, as long as you maintain the same potential as your supply, you don't have anything to worry about. That means don't ground yourself when you're touching right. it. Well, common secret. I'm going to go People the extra are, mile and not. Yeah, touch just it. don't touch it. Yeah, that's use gloves. That's, use insulation. Use insulated yeah. tools. Use don't touch the shit. See, so, that's what I mean, you it's guys. It's not that are. hard. Yeah, you guys are for like that. I stay in the chat room all the time. It's not that fucking hard. Well, that's what my wife would say about you know cooking dinner, but I don't have such good luck doing it. <laughs> So, because hmm. you don't want to. Well, no, because there's an art to every interest art in life, and some yeah. of us 
may be uh, may be attracted to the electrical, but don't have the math abilities to evaluate the formulas to make sense. Yeah. We're taking your word for understanding something and going, oh, well, that makes sense to me because he said it like that. I don't know any different. <laughs> well, okay, I would sometimes prefer to be around people I can trust for their word I, I, than I have know. to go through all the you know schooling to learn oh, the math. Sure. I come back with a smart ass answer. Now you want to get serious? No, nah, because <laughs> you remember that movie, A Few Good Men. No. Well, it was Jack Nicholson and some <laughs> other guy. And and you're gonna get that answer about any movie. You yet, and Rob. Rob and Larry, it was like watching that movie for a few minutes because Rob was drilling Larry about the answers. It was great. I really had a good time tonight. You guys really made yeah. it a night. I, I, I enjoyed it a little bit. I always enjoy talking to you, Larry. Uh, it's fun I, every I, time. It's, it's so refreshing to, 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 to be around intelligent people. Ouch. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> uh, you were included in that. My, you wrote in the joke, Captain information. Well, no. you know, I appreciate, uh, Larry, all the little bits and pieces that you've managed to put together and, you know, convey to other folks so that I'll help them. That's, it's a nice way to be. I like that about you. Well, because we comfort, each other. right, but comfort is a necessity to a mind like yours and, you know, to share what you know with the rest of us out of your own time and whatnot, I take it serious. I um, really appreciate and you any your time. Any time you want to come on and, and do a show about whatever's on your mind, any subject you have, come on and we'll we'll talk about it. And uh, I'll we, just let you tell me when you're ready to do a show. We should just start doing like a monthly show or more often if you're willing, Larry. I've, I'm always up for it. Well, that's what I mean is we we started out with monthly and we've done three shows in like three weeks. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So when I said but, weekly, Rob was yeah, you know, slapping well, me around. Weekly, weekly, I, well, I wasn't trying to, to monopolize on Larry's time. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah. am. He's a but wealth if, of fucking knowledge. If you're willing to, to do a weekly show, Larry, let's do it. Well, it just depends on whether or not my arm is in a cast. <laughs> I fish a bunch. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, speaking I, I of which, when you gonna when you gonna come down here? I, I'm to willing Lake, to Washita. When you want to do it, let's make plans. Boy, Lake Washita would be so much fun. I don't have a boat to get out on that one. We'll rent one. Okay. Whoa! Uh, you can get one for under three hundred bucks for a fishing boat for the day. Hey, Cowboy oh, Tex. Yeah. Cowboy Tex giving us a. Big hello on the real yeah. Do we hey, have any questions? Question. Yeah, uh, nobody called in. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. we, we have a small... chance to ask questions. If you're listening and in the chat room, post your questions eight now. Eight minutes left, but there, yeah, you know, there was minutes. a small crowd that were listening live, and yeah, yeah, this will oh, get nobody is interested in what I got to say anyway. Well, no, well, we Grimner Grimner rebroadcasts. Us all over the place, and we will yeah, be honest yeah. with you. The show will get listened to. Boy. Yeah, I've got old, I've got old shows that I did with whoever, and some alone were 250 hits for the crap that I've talked about. So, hmm. you know, it's not a popular audience. The people that pay attention to whatever we talk about are usually not dummies. But seriously, Larry, uh, I've uh, There's not many of them. I would love to have you down uh, uh, for a day of fishing. Ooh. I did look into it. it it's a uh, it's a good seven hour drive from here. Whoa! Um, we'll have we'll have to look into that when it gets a little bit warmer. Yeah, yeah, a little. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sometime April, in June, April, May, somewhere. Yeah, yeah maybe May. Okay. Well, with that all this, a good birthday trip. Yeah, but we got climate change, so it's going to probably be like ninety degrees in April. Don't worry about it. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't that mean that we're all going to die? Uh, by you'll I, be, I, you'll be fishing for polar bear. To, I got nothing tying me up, so it's really up to your schedule, Larry. Um, as far as when you're uh, willing and able to to uh, make the trip, so. Uh, uh, you let me know. 
And like, we'll, we'll, we'll make plans and uh, hang out and uh, spend a weekend fishing and telling stories. You bet. I'm a so, good liar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I say the, the most lies are told uh, right after fishing. Um, war so, and banking. Stopping. Fishing, oh, yeah. during war, wars, and banking. During wars and right before elections. Or right before <laughs> right before sex. Because once you've done it, you can't lie anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My fish get to be bigger after I let them go. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. They're back. They always, they always grow by 50% at least. At least. <sighs> See, the, <laughs> the only fishing I've ever done is at the end of the bar. That's I've done my share of that too. I admit, I'm I'm not a big big fisherman type, uh, but I'm willing to do it. Oh yeah, to pick Larry's brain about all the oh yeah secrets Larry he's got out in the boat, captive audience. <laughs> because we could do it. Like if you want to do another one better, next week, Larry, I better shut up. He'll never come. No, but <laughs> if you want to do another show next week, there are so many sources of information that you have. Oh, yeah, we can go on and on. And yeah, on topic. It, pick another, and I'll just add it to the state-of-the-art energy with Larry Woods, and we'll just add a part three, and we'll yeah. make a series out of it. for it, When people do finally need your information, you can post so we'll this on, a, you can put this so we'll on your... A Thursday show, three o'clock. Right, but you could... Let, we'll Rob, show. let me finish. You could put no. this... Where I don't go, which is Facebook and Twitter and all that. You yeah. need expo. See, I ain't doing this because I'm trying to get popular. I'm doing this so that he can get his message out there. But I yeah. only I got so little interest in exposing it. I, it's embarrassing. I don't self promote worth the fuck. But if, I'd if like you get an ad for it. I can post it on two of my Facebook pages. Yeah. I don't, sure, you can, that's what I mean is you're going to have to participate because I've taken myself yeah. out of all that stuff and it backfired on me because now is when I should be involved and I'm not, but I did manage to help put this together and I I'm want not it. on any of that stuff either, so yeah. I feel bad. Well, yeah. there you go, but, but Larry is, so we need Larry yeah. to put this on his yeah. own stuff. So, yeah, well, Larry, do you want to do that Thursday show, three o'clock every week? Yeah, Thursday, 3 o'clock every week. Sounds good. Okay. Promote I'm in. that on your Facebook pages. Okay. Um, there you go. Put the uh, Grim, would you post the direct link to the Dork Table show? Because my, my crowd is really small, Larry. I don't have much of a, a following, so to speak, but you should. So I'm more oh, interested in getting, gonna... getting you out there than I am me. I'm just presenting you, so to speak, and telling some bad jokes in the background. But... I'm not an electrical genius or none of that, but I know I know a good thing when I see it. Ask my wife; she'll tell you. <laughs> there, the, promote that link, Larry. Here, I'll post that. that in the um, post that on your Facebook pages and such. Oh and yeah, wait, and he's got it there That's with a good. with a little blurb saying, uh, "Every Thursday, three o'clock Central Time, I will be doing podcasts on." Uh, Coils, electricity, energy, state of the world, stuff and things. Whatever, whatever. whatever. You can do your own updates on that from what you have to work with. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm not sure. I'm just trying to help make sure we don't miss something that we should have covered. And good. Well, okay. Then it's Thursdays. Then at uh, it'll be nine o'clock. Thursdays at three o'clock. Regular show. You got that, Graham? Put it in the schedule. But for the uh, until the twenty ninth, we're an hour we're an hour different than usual because Denmark hasn't done the time change yet. So you cha- changed change right. times, but we didn't. So for the next few weeks, so I'm now you're stuck with it. Well, yeah, but the time is so an hour. Time changes, on. You're gonna you're gonna then be, we'll be normal. Yeah, yeah. you'll yeah. be starting at ten o'clock. No, oh, no, no, we're not gonna change. You got to change. Grim Grim took care of it for me. <laughs> Leave me alone, Rob. <laughs> God, bro, this killed me. <laughs> Captain Buzzkill. Anyway. I'm just messing with you. No, I know that. Appreciate Larry Wor- Larry Woods and Rob Works. There was a mouthful. Grim says we should come up with a new show name more fitting to our content. Um, how about of, the title, State of the Art Energy? 
remove the safety labels. Oh, okay. <laughs> you want to remove? Is that what you want to call no, it? I no. I come up with state of the art energy and with Larry like Woods. That. There you go. Yeah. Okay. And we'll just do the. That'll be the basis of it. State of the okay. art. Or All just right. how about how about just state of the art? Whatever. It's up to you, Larry. It, I, I'm just it typing. Doesn't have, it doesn't have to be uh, limited to energy, which. Yeah, everything, well, it is everything, kinda, everything is energy, but uh, I'm gonna overrule you there, Rob, and go with state of the art energy for five bucks. Fine. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I appreciate. I'll, I'll see you guys. Then thank you very much for the show tonight. I really enjoyed it, and uh, we'll catch you guys next week at the same bat time, same bat channel. And if you're uh, look for other shows on the RLM um, dot com chat room site and you can find all the shows scheduled we ran a little over good night everybody thanks. guys thanks. thank you very much larry thanks everybody for listening over and out